you might have known them for a slightly different name. However, for uploading this video on YouTube, I have had to change it a bit. Their fitting name tells you exactly what they did. A few of the members were notorious and made the headlines quite frequently. This video contains the most intriguing stories around this group. From a brother that manages to escape the police multiple times, to another brother that tried to extort the first Dutch Bitcoin company, let's dive into the fascinating stories around the tattoo hitters. It all started with the brothers Brian and Cor from Schiedam. The two brothers have been living a life of crime ever since they were teenagers. As early as 16 years old, Cor already found himself in trouble with the police. One of Cor P's nicknames is the Eel. In the Netherlands, this nickname is commonly used to describe someone slippery, elusive, or untrustworthy. Cor was exactly that. Around the year 1999, at age 16, he already managed to escape from the police for the first time. They wanted to arrest him in his ex-girlfriend's house and allowed him to get dressed. Before they knew it, Cor fled through the bathroom window. Less than a year later, he was arrested and sent to jail after all. One day, the prison guards had to bring him to the courthouse. He broke the door open and fled. Later that evening, he called the Dutch newspaper AD and told them he had some breaking news. He said, I have just escaped, I am in a nice hotel and I am about to order a bottle of champagne. Sometime later, he gets spotted near his home and was on the brink of getting arrested. You can probably sense what is coming. As the police officer tried to arrest Cor, they got into a scuffle. It's during this scuffle that the police officer suddenly felt a sharp pain in his back. He pulled a muscle. Cor jumped into a pond near them and swam to the other side, taunting the police officer. He escaped again. In 2005, at age 22, Cor's crimes became increasingly more violent. He was involved with a man named Bart K in a drug deal gone wrong. Cor demanded €20,000 from Bart to repay him. Bart, in his turn, was not willing to pay that amount. Cor did not take no for an answer and took Bart's Rolex worth €20,000 to settle the debt. Kickboxer Peter Schmidt, a good friend of Bart, was absolutely furious that this was done to his friend. He set his sights on retrieving the watch for his friend, but the cost to do so would be very high. Cor and Peter met up several times with each other. However, Cor still did not give the watch back. On the 15th of August, Peter received a call, left the house in a hurry, and got inside the car with Cor. Together, they drove towards the north of Rotterdam. After some time, Cor parked the car, got out, and walked towards an alley. Peter followed Cor, and before he knew it, someone hiding in the alley jumped in front of him and struck him multiple times in the back as he tried to run away. This man was later identified as Iron Eye, a nephew of Cor. Both got arrested in 2006 and sentenced to 15 years in prison each. Both men appealed. Iron ultimately got 14 years, but Cor the Eel P managed to get away once again, as he was acquitted of all charges due to a lack of evidence. In the following years, the true violence would start. Cor, Brian and others would form their infamous group called the Tattoo Hitters, a group of supposedly 8 to 10 men, mainly from Moluccan descent. Most of them remained unknown to the broader public. Their name was derived from something that united all members. Each member had a specific tattoo across his back, with a text that means, Be Decisive, in Mandarin. They had a certain speciality and could be hired for it, like the group's name suggests, their speciality was carrying out hits and whacking people. There was a story that in 2009, the group supposedly took on a job to whack Yasin Shakur. Ono Kutz was a member of the Tattoo Hitters, and he knew Yasin already. This made it much easier for Ono to lure Yasin and fulfill the job. On the 5th of February 2009, Ono and Yasin meet up with each other on a car park near the Highway A4 right next to a pancake restaurant. Yasin, however, was accompanied by Boneka Belserang, a well-known criminal from Amsterdam, 
Ono had not expected this. He felt that he had no other choice than to whack both of them. He whacked his target, and Borneka was just collateral damage. Yet here is where it gets interesting. For nearly 13 years, that was the story told about this incident. However, in 2022, an unknown witness told a totally different story to news channel RTV Oost. According to this story, Ono took on a job to whack Boneka, not Yasin. Boneka was held responsible for a missing coke shipment. Since he knew Yasin, Yasin served as bait to bring Boneka to the car park. Instead of Yasin being the main target and Boneka collateral damage, it was the other way around all along. This incident caused a lot of turmoil in the underworld, as Boneka was the little brother of Etus Belterang, a high-ranking member of motor club Satudara. Etus immediately wanted payback and started putting prices on the head of the suspects. This in turn caused a lot of turmoil within the tattoo hitters group. What if they would kidnap Ono and he would tell the truth? They feared that they could be next. The only option left was to whack one of their own which they did on the 16th of March in 2009, just a month after Boneka and Yasin. All of a sudden, Ono was gone. No one heard of him anymore. Just nine days later, on the 25th of March, he was found in the dunes of Hoek van Holland. The group got rid of their member, afraid that he would turn into a liability. In August 2009, the tattoo hitters were on a mission again. Members Kor, Brian, Jeroen and Evert set their sights on Marlon D, a criminal from Amsterdam. Marlon arrived at his home and remained seated in his car for a minute. Before he knew it, a car drove by and someone in the car unleashed at least 30 shots. Only 10 managed to hit Marlon. He managed to survive the hit after several operations in the hospital. Unfortunately for him, however, he will remain disabled for the rest of his life. A very botched hit, you can say. It did not really help either that they were all quickly arrested after the incident. They all got jailed and sentenced to 14 years in prison each. While in jail, Kaur is abruptly moved to another jail after information emerged that he was about to whack fellow prisoner Jeremy P. In 2018, Kaur was released early with an ankle monitor. It was during this freedom that the Ono case started to take shape after a new witness started talking to the police. Kaur became a prime suspect in this case again. However, he was still allowed to wait his trial in freedom, which is interesting to note as he already had escaped many times. Fast forward to 2020. Kaur was still freely awaiting the sentence in the honor case with his ankle monitor. In January, however, he decided to wait no more. He cut off his ankle monitor and fled the country. For the next two years, he remained unfindable for law enforcement around the world, despite being internationally wanted. It was not until January 2022 that Kaur would pop up on the radar again. But the reason he popped back up again is unbelievable. After he fled the Netherlands, Kaur most likely thought the Dominican Republic was a great place to hide. Nice weather, nice country, and far from the Netherlands, and thus, his enemies. Well. He was in for a serious surprise on the 4th of January in Las Terenas. It was almost all caught on CCTV. Kaur can be seen driving in his white SUV through the streets of Las Terenas. Seemingly without him noticing, there were two men on a scooter following him. All of a sudden, a different camera shows Kaur speeding off through a street while the two men on the scooter followed him, but at a much slower pace. It seemed as if Kaur was successful fleeing from the hitters, until he crashed his car. The two men were able to catch up and the shooter struck him from close range multiple times, seemingly finishing the job. The two men drove off and weaved through traffic to flee the scene. Miraculously, Kaur survived it and fled into an alley. After the attempt, the two men reportedly fled to the Netherlands, but have yet to be caught till this day. After Kaur was healed in the hospital, he was immediately extradited to the Netherlands and jailed. It is unclear who ordered the hit and why. Nonetheless, Kaur's elusiveness helped him once again. With Kaur behind bars, you still had the other brother that made headlines. In a need for money, member Brian P and an accomplice 
thought it was a good idea to try and extort the two owners of the first Dutch Bitcoin company called Bitonic in between August and October 2022. They seriously threatened both owners via a chat program called Wicca. I cannot entirely cite these threats due to the language used, however it went something along the line of, if you decide not to pay, I will make your life a living nightmare. I will send my hyenas, again and again. I will keep attacking. People will be taken from their homes, schools and jobs. Things will happen and you will be responsible. I think that is worth a million, right mister? But it did not stop just at threats through the chat program. Both owners would find actual bullets in front of their homes with a letter. Newspaper Panorama revealed the letters to read the following. Be smart. Contact me on Wicca. Caramba caramba. Pay and I'll go. You will only get one chance. Test me and your family will find out very quick. This is a battle you won't win. The owners and their families immediately contacted law enforcement. After further investigation, it could be determined that it was Brian P who was behind the extortion. Police arrested him in October 2022 and has remained in jail till this day. These were some of the most intriguing stories around the tattoo hitters. Stories full of different twists and turns. I hope you enjoyed the video. I will probably dive a little deeper into the story of Ono Kut, because he has had quite an interesting life. So make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications for the next video. See you in the next one.